Hello and welcome to the V-Ray for Form Z Quick Start video on interior lighting. We're going to use this interior architectural scene to demonstrate how to set up lighting using V-Ray for Form Z. Now this video builds on the previous V-Ray for Form Z Quick Start video covering exterior lighting. This scene already has a V-ray sun providing light for the scene, which is aligned to shine through the windows. I'll render the scene to see what we have to start with. The only light source providing light for the scene is that sun coming inside as indirect light. Now, direct light produces less noisy renders, and we typically want to make sure more of the scene is lit using direct light. I already have render elements set up here, and as I switch to the lighting render element, we can notice that only these portions are getting direct light. Switching to the indirect lighting render element, or GI, it becomes evident that most of the lighting in this scene is currently indirect light. Now, we'll cover render elements in future videos, but this goes to show us what kind of light we have in the scene. First, let's see how to enhance that light coming into the scene. Now, I'll create what's called a portal light, or light portal, using an option available with the rectangle light, which enhances the light already coming in through the windows I'll draw a rectangular light to be used for this window and make sure it is about the size of the window opening, making the outside sunlight into more of a direct light. And make sure that the light sits just inside the glass and the curtains. I'll move the view back to where it was and click Render. You can see that by default, the rectangle light is just like any other light, providing light similar to an artificial light source. Now, to modify the light so that it acts as a light portal, we simply need to go into the light parameters of the light, go into the parameters tab, and change the portal light setting from no light to one of the two portal light options. Portal light takes into account the light that bounces before it reaches the portal, so it's more accurate at a render time cost. So the light coming through the glass and the curtains, for example, is affected by that glass and the fabric before the light portal passes it through into the room as a direct light. Simple portal light ignores any light bounces before the light hits the geometry, essentially pretending that the geometry in the way, such as the glass and the curtains in this case, are not physically there, making a hole, so to speak. This produces a faster and brighter result, but it may not be as physically accurate. I'll set mine to a simple portal light and press OK and then hit Render. Notice that the light source is no longer visible and that the coloration of the original rectangle light has changed to match the sunlight coming in from the outside. Check the render elements and you can see that the scene is now lit by more direct light due to that light portal. And just like any other Form Z light, we can easily duplicate the light so that there is one in front of the other window as well. Now I'll hit render and you can see that the space is now better lit by the light coming in from both windows. Now I'm going to stop this rendering because I'd like to light the scene by using only internal artificial lights. I'm going to first disable all of the light sources for the scene that I currently have and make sure that the environment is set to render black. If I render the scene, it'll render pitch black with no light sources. Now first, I want to get some light into these sconces right here. There are a few different ways to do this, but what I really want to do is just use the geometry that's already there. I can do this by using the Mesh Light tool in the V-Ray Lights palette. Simply select the tool, then select the geometry. So I'll select the glass portions of these two lights, and that object is converted into a Mesh Light. And then when I hit Render, you can see that these objects are now producing light for the scene. 
Now they're a little bright and I'd like to make them a little warmer. Since these objects are now lights, they are listed in the lights palette. So I can go into the parameters of each of the two lights by double clicking on each one. First, I'll change the color to something closer to amber or orange for warmth, and then change the intensity to something a little bit lower, let's say a value of 8. I'll repeat the same settings for the other light, and hit render. Notice that the lights look dimmer and quite a bit warmer now. Now, these sconces do look nice, but don't provide enough light for the scene as a whole. I'll reorient my view to see that there are a couple of light fixtures in the ceiling that I'd like to use to throw some light into the space. I have an IES profile in mind for these fixtures, and V-Ray can use it to accurately portray how that light will look in the scene by using the IES light. This light can be placed by selecting the appropriate button on the V-Ray light's palette. Placing the light by first selecting the location of the source of the light, which I'll place at the mouth of the light fixture, and then selecting the target's location, which will be a spot on the ground, which will set the direction that the fixture is pointing. Double click the IES light in the lights palette to look at the parameters of the IES light. I can select the IES file that I would like by going to the Parameters tab and clicking on the Select IES File button. This allows me to change the IES profile from the default profile to an IES file of my choosing, and then press OK, and we'll see what we get when I render. As you can see, the IES file is providing some nice variation to the light bouncing off the floor and the walls. But let's say I would like to adjust the brightness of the IES light. Now by default, V-Ray gets the brightness from the properties of the IES profile to be as accurate as possible to the manufacturer's intentions for that light. However, I can go to the light parameters and under the intensity tab, enable override intensity to set the intensity manually. And I'll try a value of 1200 and try to render. Now, that's a little too dark, so I'll try a higher value at 4800 and render again. And now, that's starting to look good. Now, just like with other lights, you can also adjust the color of the light to make it a little warmer. I'll set this a little closer to yellow. And that's starting to look good. Lastly, I'll duplicate this IES light so that we have light emitting from both fixtures. I'll disable material overrides, and I've set up my render settings for a final quality full-size render, and I'll set off the render for a final look. Once the render completes in the VFB, I'll use the Show Corrections control icon to access color corrections to tweak the look of this render using exposure to reduce the highlight burn, then a curve to create some contrast nicely in the image, and lastly, a little more saturation in the hue saturation control. Now with this, we have a nice lighting solution for this interior scene. Thank you for joining us for this look at interior lighting in V-Ray for Form Z.